OK, hi there. Let's spend a few minutes just working through uh, the causes and the effects of shifts in the Keynesian aggregate supply curve. First of all, what might cause an inward shift of Keynesian aggregate supply? Well, typically, of course, uh, an inward shift is caused by a rise or an increase in costs. So it could be, for example, wage costs per unit of output going up or an increase in the price of imported energy. Or perhaps the government has an effect on costs by imposing higher environmental taxes, such as a carbon tax. Here's our Keynesian aggregate supply curve with an initial equilibrium of Y1. If the uh, short-run costs of production go up, then the curve will shift from AS1 to AS2. Uh, the economy has a higher level of unit cost of supply. Consequence is that there's a new equilibrium here with a fall, a contraction of real output from Y1 to Y2, and critically, an increase in the general price level from GPL1 rising to GPL2. And this is a good diagram to draw if you get a question on uh, the causes of cost push inflation. What might cause an outward shift of the Keynesian aggregate supply curve? Well, again, it's in reverse, isn't it? So the aggregate supply curve will shift outwards if there's a fall in the unit cost of production. It could be, for example, that world energy prices, the price of crude oil and gas and so on, have fallen. It could be perhaps a strong exchange rate uh, leading to uh, lower import prices. Don't forget, when the exchange rate is strong, the price of the goods and services we import tends to go down. Or it could be on the fiscal side, the government increasing subsidies, to cut the costs of producers in farming or construction or energy and so on and so forth. Here's our initial equilibrium, Y1. A fall in costs shifts the aggregate supply curve outwards and downwards, leading to an, a, a fall in the equilibrium price level, but an increase in output from Y1 to Y2, and a reduction in the price level from GPL1 to GPL2. And that would typically cause some disinflationary uh, pressure in the economy, the rate of inflation we'd expect to come down. How do we show long-run growth using a Keynesian supply curve? Well, of course, the Keynesian supply curve uh, tells us what the productive capacity is of an economy. So uh, that's how we show long-run growth, an increase in the uh, full capacity at national output from YFC to YFC2. Now, it could be the case that costs have come down as well, but I've just shown an increase in productive capacity from AS1 to AS2. What that does mean is the economy can then operate at a higher level of demand. So there's our initial equilibrium with AD1, giving us a general price level of GPL1 and, and real output of Y1. But of course, if we now have more productive capacity, then the economy can sustain... Uh, a higher level of demand. It can meet that demand. AD1 could shift out to AD2, giving us an equilibrium here of Y2, but at the same general price level. And this, of course, would be non-inflationary growth. Typically, for example, this would be caused by higher productivity or increased investment, which increases the productive capacity of the economy. So this would be a good diagram to draw in an exam if you want to show long long run growth without causing inflation. So there we go, some shifts in the Keynesian aggregate supply curve. Hopefully you found this useful. If you do, please, please press like and subscribe. We don't take it for granted, but we certainly appreciate it. Stay happy, stay positive. See you sometime soon.